Why do humans identify with ignorance? Well, I guess I know the reason why, because humans have a predisposition to accepting an answer, whether or not it's true, to pacify the unease that comes with not knowing solves cognitive dissonance but I guess what I'm saying is when you identify with ignorance when the actual answer comes along your identity is shattered so it's like you take for example something like religion which basically if you boil it down to it's identifying with ignorance Forming an identity around the fact that you don't know something. So you're inserting a satisfactory answer into that gap of ignorance. But you, what you see is science fills in that gap with actual accurate information. So once that, that answer has been discovered with science, and then you try to spread that inquiry the religious people which form their identity around ignorance they respond in a vitriolic you know knee jerk offended feelings type of way emotional way so I, if you identify with ignorance when the truth comes, your identity is shattered. Your identity gets destroyed. And that's what you see with religion or with any other type of irrational thinking. <clears throat> so it's like you're not leaving enough room for learning. Because I, I'd rather have answers I'd rather have questions that can never be answered than answers that can never be questioned see religious people they they'd rather an answer that's wrong that can never be questioned The truth is, whatever it is, right? And we use the scientific method to discover those truths. Instead of just saying, oh, we don't know something. Oh, let's hurry up and, and make something up that, 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 that just makes us not feel as uncomfortable. No, that's not how you get to truth. That's not how you discern truth from false. No. You have the intellectual honesty, intellectual humility to say, well, I don't know this thing. I don't know. My preconceived notions were wrong. And that makes me feel bad. But instead of disregarding that feeling and lying to myself, I'm going to acknowledge it for what it is and use that to propel me towards truth with a reliable method. It's like people are so afraid of being wrong. I just look at that as a learning opportunity. Wow, I learned something. It's not about being right or not. It's not about being wrong. It's not about uh, a guru. That's some, some other bullshit, you know, religious type of thinking. A guru. This guy knows everything. We can never, we're too inferior. We're peasantry. You know, we, we don't have the internal uh, fucking chakras or the whatever the fuck uh, superstitious uh, pseudoscientific nonsense you want to insert. Oh, we just can't know 
And this this guy is, is spewing fucking tautologies and, and deepities and fucking truisms and uh, jargon that, that, that doesn't actually mean anything. He's the chosen one. No. If your claim can't be falsifiable, then it can't be experimented scientifically. And if it can't be experimented, it's not worthy of debate. You know? So basically, uh, that just means you make a claim, right? You make a fucking claim. That claim has to be, in order to be uh, able to be rationally accepted, right? That claim has to be able to be falsified. It has to be able to be proven false. Or proven, you know... This is likely true, this is likely false, right? Because nothing is ever actually proven with 100% certainty. All right, so, but if your claim is unfalsifiable, you can't claim to be a rational person and go around saying, I believe this, or prove it. You know? You know, when, whenever you're talking in, in a casual conversation, colloquially, you know, you can use different words to mean different things you know whatever be inconsistent in your usage of language but when you're having an intellectual discourse intellectual debate discussion whatever you have to be pretty cautious and pretty deliberate with your language in order to convey uh, your point in order to actually have a productive conversation so let's say, for example, you, we're having a discussion, a debate, a discourse, intellectual discourse, right? So you say the grass is green. I'll tell you something like, what does that mean? You, you look at me like, what? what? What the hell are you talking about? I, I just told you the most simplest thing. Like, the grass is green. Yeah, but what does that actually mean? You know, I, I heard I heard noise come out of your your face hole. You know, I heard noise coming out of that hole in your head. Sound. You, I heard words, and language. But let's see, let's break down that those sentences and, the, and that those words. What do they actually mean? Or simplify it? Because simplicity is a hallmark of intelligence, not complexity. Contrary to popular belief. Oh, that's so complex. It must have a creator. Well, no. no. But anyway, I digress. So you say something like the grass is green. What does that mean? Well, you know, look at it. It's green. That that still doesn't. Uh, it that that is that doesn't sufficiently explain to me what you just said. But if you say something like, "Whoa, this." Uh, you know, this type of uh, organ, organic life, right? Assuming that we have a, a basic understanding of, of uh, physics, biology, you know, this, for example, you would say something like, this cellulose uh, has uh, chlorophyll, which, when reflected off of light, uh, has a certain wavelength of whatever that to the human eye is green, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. You know, you actually have some type of explanation that can be simplified into this word means this, this word means that, this word means that. And when all those words are put together, form a coherent, cogent statement. When you have inconsistencies in your language in your, or in your usage of language, you fail to convey a sensical statement. People have to understand that their ignorance of something doesn't make it not true.
your ignorance has no effect on whether something is true or not. You know, if somebody breaks something down to you and uh, they explain it to you and you don't understand it and you opt for some untrue but more satisfactory answer, that doesn't make your answer any more likely to be true and it doesn't have any bearing on whether or not what they said was true. No, it's really about making your method for discerning reality decipher whether something is fact or fiction or truth or false. You know, it's really more about basically having a good bullshit detector and your method being constructed in a way that basically leaves no room for bullshit you know so you know if if there is bullshit in a claim it's not that you're basically saying that this claim can't be true is that we're gonna bullshit test it to such a pedantic uh, degree that it'll be beyond a reasonable doubt like you know, you know gee you know maybe Maybe this thing isn't true, you know. So we, a lot of times we use uh, heuristics, you know. You know what heuristics are. Heuristics are heuristics are a mental shortcut to ease the cognitive load of making a decision. We use those all the time. But see, the thing is those heuristics have to be based on some type of foundation of skepticism. You, know, you can't just say, oh, that my intuition, my gut feeling is this, so that is what it is necessarily. No. Like, for example, we, if you hear growling behind the bushes, right? That may be a lion, right? If you hear, if you see red on the bushes, ah, that may be just some guys playing paintball, you know, shooting paintball guns. If you hear screaming, that just may, may be kids having fun, playing around. If you hear all three at the same time and you're in the forest, hmm, that, that may be a guy getting eaten by a lion, you know? It's so basically we're using context clues based off of, you know, things that we know to be true. We explain the unknown in terms of the known. So we take things that we know to a, a, a pretty good certainty to be likely true. And we, we stack those things together. We can find those things together and, you know, come up with a thing. Come up with a, a hypothesis. And we test that hypothesis. You know? Another heuristic... I like to use is if we accept prop this proposition to be true, if we accept this proposition to be true, what else would have to be true in order for that proposition to be true? And if the answer to that is uh, conflicts with things that we do know to be true, then, hmm, gee, you know, maybe that proposition isn't probably is not true you know, probably not true but if it doesn't conflict that doesn't mean that it's true but you know you got something going for you 
that's another thing. People got to understand that all evidence isn't equal. Like, for example, you know, people say, you know, absence of evidence is an evidence of absence. But actually, in the case where evidence would be expected, it could be evidence of absence. And, uh, you know, when people use anecdotes, they use a, a multitude of anecdotes to uh, go against uh, established scientific fact. You know, my, my cousin did that, my uncle did that, my meemaw did that. Well, yeah, that's, that's cool, but you know, you know, if we if we were to break up evidence into like points, into like a point system, each of those those anecdotes would be like worth like one point. So you have a bunch of those. You know, let's say like your cousin, your uncle, and your meemaw. That's that'd be like three points. And then you have something like the theory of evolution via natural selection. That would be like worth a billion points, you know. Well, gee, you know how how many how many of those anecdotes will it take to even be in the same ballpark of uh, legitimacy and validity as something like the theory of evolution? You know, that's just to put it that rough estimate, rough uh, you know that example, just to put it in perspective. When actually, I think. The ratios are actually way bigger than that. You know, it <laughs> probably be like more like a trillion for the uh, theory of evolution. Maybe like some type of fraction for the anecdote. So basically, we're not saying the anecdote is not evidence. We're just saying that it's a weaker form of evidence. Basically, what I'm saying. It's another thing people have to stop doing, like. People have this misunderstanding that science, you know, the scientific method has any bias towards uh, religion, politics, personal feelings, emotions. No. No, it's, it's just because something, is, you know, a scientific study uh, basically says that something is it comes out and it's con it conflicts with some the current political p politically correct thing that it's wrong or that it's invalid no science doesn't give a fuck about PC you know just because you disagree with it or it makes you feel a certain way has no bearing on its truthness or you know they'll they'll cherry pick the data and be like oh look at this one study it says this therefore it validates and confirms my preconceived notions like no in science one study doesn't mean much. It doesn't account for much. As a matter of fact, science in science, nothing is ever proven. You can't say this, this, and that, this, this, and that, therefore, that this proves. No. Nothing is ever proven. You know, science forms tentative conclusions it forms theories that explain absurd phenomena and it's tentative it's able to be revised it's able to be proven wrong you know it, it reduces uncertainty not eradicates reduces you know I, yeah, hopefully, you know, it'd be cool to reduce it to as close to zero as possible, but 
there are some limitations that, you know, that we just currently have or, you know, probably will always have to some extent. But, you know, we, I don't know, man. People just... I'm not saying that you have to have a goddamn PhD and whatever the fuck, but goddamn, at least make an attempt to be rational, you know? You know, it's, you know people just walk around, you know, in the world, you know, a certain thing, just kind of spewing things out of their head hole, making noise, and, uh, you know, just asserting these notions, you know, not really hypotheses, not theories, not even, are they really, like, ideas? They're more, I mean, to put it in the most charitable way, like, it's a notion, like, it, it's kind of this, you know, you know it's, it's kind of words that they're, they're, they're basically just expressing uh, uh, an emotion, a, a current emotion, you know, like not really any framework, like, okay, this is, this is my hypothesis, I see this observed phenomena, what does this have in common with things that are already established in, you know, the natural world? How does it differ? What are the things that we do know? What are we actually trying to accomplish by experimenting this? You know, no, it's just, I think this, I feel that, so it's true. Not only is I, do I think it's true, but I'm asserting it onto others using force and violence. No, don't do that. Stop it. You, you, you stop it. Don't do that, you know, it's like people uh, have, you know, people assert these notions that are harmful, and then a guy, you know, well, actually, you know, and like, it'll be funny because, like, the scientific evidence on that, on the things that they talk about, it, it won't be like something that's, well, you know, this is actually heavily, still heavily debated in, in science, and we still don't know a lot about it, no, it'll be something that, Something that's been established, scientifically established since like the fucking 30s or maybe in the, maybe even before that. And it's like, you're still clueless on this. You, you do just read a book. Or better yet, use the damn supercomputer that you hold in your fucking hand every day. You know. But it's like, uh, well, I think this because of that. Well, actually, no, it's the... You know, it's uh, because of the mutation in the single nucleotide polymorphism that antagonizes the muscarinic receptor, which causes release in the, the acetylcholine in the brain or whatever the fuck the case may be, you know. They just, because they, it's not even just because they fail to understand it. Because that, that can be solved. Like that's why I always say, you know, ignorance is not necessarily a problem. It's it's the willful ignorance. It's the the willful willfulness to not be able to to, uh, to not want to learn, basically. You know. So the fact that they don't want to learn and are uh, basically intellectually lazy. And they still go around asserting uh, these harmful ideas. You know? Oh, it's just because of, oh, it's actually because of, you know, like you explain something simple like the fucking water cycle or something. And they just, like, what? They just, they just, huh? Dude, like, it's not even. A lot of the stuff is, dude, just, were you paying attention in fucking seventh grade fucking biology? Like, that's when they taught you a lot of this, the stuff that people, you know, every day, you know, debate. 
if you will, about. You know? So. So it's like, it's not even like, oh, this guy's using all these scientific terms. No. I'm not, not, I'm not saying anything revolutionary. You know, I'm not some fucking guru like with these motherfuckers, you know, talk about like, you know, that's another thing. That's not a, it's not really a, it's not a concept in science. There's not this one guy that supposedly knows everything and, uh, you know, the, the masses that are uh, inherently or intrinsically incapable of learning. No, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. It's literally the opposite. You can you conduct the studies and, and like when, like fuck man. If you literally you can just look up the studies. But you no, know, most people don't know how to parse uh, those things. Uh, parse research papers. So just leave it up to the guys that actually do that for a living. That's when they. That's what they mean when they say trust the experts. But anyway, or you can do it yourself, but just you know, actually have a willingness to learn, uh, to want to learn, basically, intellectual curiosity. Anyway, uh, la, 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 la. yeah.